When you see me sitting here at the news desk about to start another on the level, you don't know what I'll talk about. Will I discuss exploitation in esports? Will I go into the flaming train wreck that is AAA game development? Will my jokes be funny for once? It's an endless possibility space. Kinda like opening up a loot box? That's right, gather your mates and sit up straight. It's time for another Loot Crate update. Brought to you by Seagate. Create and backdate your duplicates on first rate solid states. Now, let's begin by returning to Belgium, home of Spa, Frankenshop, and Mool Free, and certainly no other stereotypes about food. Last time we checked in, the Belgian Gaming Commission had just declared that loot boxes were a form of gambling. Game publishers have since reflected and reconsidered their monetization models and have come up with something that's fairer for the players. <laughs> oh, of course they didn't. They just disabled loot boxes in Belgium whilst keeping them for the rest of the world. Companies like Valve, 2K and Blizzard complied quickly. However, EA, whose FIFA games were specifically called out by the commission, refused to budge, and they insisted that the FIFA Ultimate Team packs did not constitute gambling. This is despite the fact that they very much do. It's, uh, hmm. Oh, I got it. It's kind of like writing a report attempting to clear your organization of corruption, all the while participating in corrupt acts. Huh, it's like I pulled that example out of nowhere. Finally, nine months after the commission handed down its ruling, EA relented and blocked Belgian players from buying the premium currency to purchase Ultimate Team packs. I guess Belgians can finally use this extra money to buy a whole bunch of other games. Or oh, waffles. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. But it isn't only the Belgian government that is taking on loot boxes. See also America, the home of Daytona Speedway, chicken and waffles, and one chicken coloured waffler. It is also the home of Republican Senator Josh Hawley, seen here winning third place in his local Nicolas Cage lookalike competition. You'll win that face off one day, Josh. He announced a bill aimed at banning loot boxes and pay to win mechanics called the Protecting Children from Abusive Games Act, which sounds like it should protect kids from the game anthem. Although, really, even adults need protection from that hot mess. There are questions about how the proposed laws will work in practice. The bill is targeted at, quote, minor-oriented games, which, contrary to expectation, aren't games that are played only deep inside gold mines. Rather, the term covers any game which could be played by kids under the age of 18. So, basically every video game ever? Call of Duty may have as many mature stickers as it wants, but based off the squeaky voice chat I encounter when I play that game, the average age of that game's player base has to be 11 years old. If this bill passes, how will it be enforced? We simply don't know. Maybe every game with loot boxes will have to be classified as adults only. Maybe we'll just get an age gate, which, as the history of the internet has proven, is 100% effective at stopping kids from accessing grown-in material. That's just science. How will it affect mobile games produced outside of America? Could it impact digital card games like Magic Arena? Oh, dip. Magic Arena. Okay, that's it, the US lawmakers. Now you've made this personal. You are going to have to pry my magic cards from my cold, dead head. You can have this back when you've calmed down. Yes, boss. In, in late May, the bill was brought into Congress with the support of Democratic Senators Ed Markley and Richard Blumenthal, seen here after opening 50 magic boosters without opening that rare to fairy cut that they so badly want. By the way, you heard that right. Republicans and Democrats have actually come together to agree on something. Granted, it wasn't on something like climate change or the rights of minorities, but uh, small successes and all that. The bill has a while yet before it becomes law, but the game industry is already attacking it. The Entertainment Software Association has called the legislation flawed and riddled with inaccuracies. The ESA has called on the bill's co-sponsors to work with the association to raise awareness on, quote, the tools and information in place to keep the control of video game play and in-game spending in parents' hands rather than the government's. Uh, game publishers? You may not want to play the self-regulation card given how badly you've let loot boxes and pay-to-win spiral out of control. Which brings me, as most things do, to Harry Potter. Hogwarts Mystery was released last year as a free-to-play mobile game, and those words should immediately fill you with dread, much like System Update Required and the new Imagine Dragons album. Nobody deserves Imagine Dragons. Hogwarts Mystery restricts your story progress whenever you've run out of energy, so, so far, so usual. However, the first time that you will run out of energy is during this scene.
yep. Right as your character is being choked to death with vines, the game forces you to cough up premium currency to progress, or to wait a couple of hours. JK Rowling would be outraged at what's happening to her universe, if she wasn't too busy tweeting about Hagrid's porno collection or whatever. Now, much like those vines, governments are clearly putting the pressure on the game industry, and it's working. The Google Play Store will now require games with loot boxes to disclose their odds. And games are increasingly moving away from loot boxes and towards battle passes, which provide rewards via progress rather than through luck. Some games have adopted them, but Dota 2 has well and truly weaponized them. One of the rewards in the International 2019 Battle Pass is an evolving voice line, which gets longer for every 100 levels you gain. And when I say gain, I pretty much mean buy at 45 US dollars per 100 levels. And boy, oh boy, have people bought. Up to level 10,000, level 15,000, and level Saudi oil tycoon. That may sound like a joke, but it turns out that the owner of that account is literally a prince of Saudi Arabia. Won't the publishers and lawmakers think of the poor, poor, incredibly rich oil royals? And that will do it for this edition of the Loot Crate Updates. Will this debate dissipate by the next date? Or will Magistrate be fated to interrogate and incarcerate? Either way, it'll be sure to fascinate. And that is everything that has happened in the world, ever.